Hello and welcome to the video. It's like nine o'clock in the morning right now. I'm not usually at work this early, but I was gonna go to the gym. Unfortunately though, I kept waking up last night and I was having a real weird dream, so I couldn't sleep. So after I dropped my son off at school, I came here instead of the gym to make a video. I was gonna go home and watch TV and be lazy, but I figured I would get up and actually do something before I had to come to work. Anyway, before I start talking about what I'm gonna actually talk about today, I want to show you a little project that I'm going to do right now because I think it would be cool. I am moving and I found my Nintendo 64 and a bunch of old video games and I have this projector and some old computer speakers so I'm going to shut off all the lights and play Nintendo 64 on that wall and I am excited about it. So hopefully it works. I'm not, I haven't turned this thing on in years. Um, I've actually had this, I think I got it when I was like five and that it's 23 years ago. So yeah, hopefully it still works. I'm excited to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 on the wall. The Nintendo turns on. I got scared for a second because I didn't plug in the HDMI. So, oh, it's on. Right on the back of the Nintendo cartridges, it says do not blow edge of connector or touch with your fingers. Before I did this on the bottom of the connector, it did not work. And then I blew on it, and hey, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is on the wall. So I'm gonna like try to focus the projector and play then. Oh. Pro score, not bad. I remember being better at this game. Hey, I collected skate. Half pipe. Nope. Can I do it? Can he do it? I thought it was 50,000. Oh, I got it. Yeah, 25,000. Okay. It's the sick score, which is 75,000. Not bad. All right, I'm gonna play this for a while now, and then maybe I'll get into making the video later. Oh, that's bright. Welcome to the rest of the video. So you wanna get better at tattooing? Then listen up. All right, so the first half of this video was done about two or maybe three years ago. I think it was 2017 I put it out. Uh, I was just starting to do YouTube and I like awkwardly sat in my station at my old shop and talked to you about tips about how to improve your tattooing. This time I'm a little bit more comfortable talking on camera. I'm not saying that I'm good at this. I'm just a little bit more comfortable and maybe a little bit more awkward. I'm not too sure, but I will link the link to that up in the cards in the corner, whatever corner it comes up in, so you can watch that also, if you haven't already. But yes, this is a part two to part one of the tips and tricks on how to improve your tattooing. So make sure to stick around till the last tip. I think it is the most important one. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So tip number one. Well, I guess this is technically tip number six because I ended on tip number five in the other video. Either way, it's tip number one in this video. Tip number six overall of how to improve your tattooing is don't be lazy with your designs, with your client. If that means spending an extra couple hours on a tattoo or even an extra sitting on a tattoo, take your time. Put in those little extra details. Put in textures and vary your line weight. After all, the person that's gonna be walking around with the tattoo, you don't have to see every day, but they are your walking portfolio. So you want that walking portfolio to look the best that it can so you can gain future clients from it. And then also on top of it, you're gonna be learning a lot if you're taking your time and putting extra little details in that you might have left out in the past. But all those extra details the textures, all those different things. That is really what makes the tattoo pop and it really sets those tattoos apart from somebody that maybe just rushed through it and took an hour, opposed to somebody that took maybe like an hour and a half or two. So speaking of not being lazy and paying attention to detail, tip number two is going on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you look at tattoos and finding artists that you look up to and just studying their work. Look at the parts of their tattoos that really stand out to you, that set it apart from your work and why you think it's better than yours. And you can zoom in on a picture and you know you can kind of tell what kind of technique someone used. Maybe not when you first start out, but as you gain some more experience, you can look at a tattoo and say, oh, okay, they use this technique. 
and you can figure out like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing differently. This is what I can be doing better. So basically just study artists that you look up to and that sounds very simple, but I don't think a lot of people do that enough. A lot of people will just scroll through Instagram and like stuff, but they're not really absorbing what they're looking at. So looking at factors of, is that person's contrast higher than yours? Is that why it looks better? Or is their composition better? The way that they work with the body and how they put the design on, the way that it flows with somebody's hip or somebody's arm. Picking apart those little details and saying like, how can I implement that into my style? I think is super important when you're trying to grow as an artist. Number three, why can't I do three? Number three is to pay attention to the industry and all the innovations that are happening. Um, there are a lot of trends in tattooing. There's a lot of trends in machine building and just everything. I'm not saying jump on every single bandwagon, but just keep your eyes out for new innovations, new things that could be making your workflow easier and better. Like for example, uh, I recently, well not recently, probably like three years ago, two years ago, I started drawing on a iPad and it has completely changed the way that I tattoo. It's super helpful. My workflow is so much faster. All of my work is in one place. All of my designs are in one place. So when I speak with a, a client the first time, I open up a new file basically for them. All of my designs are under that file. So I can look back and say, okay, you know, John has all these different tattoos and his mom liked something that he got and she wants to get the same matching one. And I can go back and say, okay, this is the stencil. I could do the same exact thing on you, no problem. So in that regard, an iPad was a huge thing for me. Instead of having papers everywhere, I'm able to just throw that in my backpack and everything is there. It's a great file system. It's a really good way to learn new technology and I definitely enjoy it. Just keep an eye out for things that can help you and are better than you know the previous way of doing things. Don't get stuck in your ways of saying like, this is the only way to do it and blah, blah, whatever. So be ready to innovate. So tip number four, is to do free tattoos or really cheap tattoos on people that you know. Say that you have a really close client or a close friend that you trust to be able to say, hey, I never tried this style, I never tried this technique, let me try it on you, I'll give it to you for free, or like super cheap. And that way, first of all, you're able to build your portfolio, you're able to take your time on something and say, okay, I'm not worrying about like, how fast can I get this done because I wanna get my new appointment in, come in on a day off or something like that, and try a new style, try a new technique. And that way you're able to build your skill and build your portfolio in a way that you normally wouldn't be able to do on a day-to-day -day basis because you might be scared to try something new on somebody that you don't know. That way, if it's a friend or somebody that just doesn't care if they have like a kind of crappy tattoo, you can just say like, hey, I was just trying things out. Now you get like a free tattoo. So yeah, find friends that don't care. I've been lucky enough to have like a whole gang of friends that literally don't care about their tattoos and I was able to practice a lot on them. So shout out to all of them. The Mess Kids family going way back. But now I do like really good tattoos on them. So that kind of makes up for the bad ones that I messed up before, whatever. Thank you guys. Now for the last tip, number five, or number 10, depending how you look at it. It's a sneaky. It's a sneaky. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Consistent, diligent, whatever you wanna call it. Hardworking, whatever. You need to be consistent in order to progress. I've said this a million times in my videos. If you watched any of my other videos, I'm sure I've said be consistent with a million other things. But overall, that is the number one tip in how to progress in anything, not just tattooing. Don't expect any progress if you just work on something for a couple hours a week. And for the people that say they don't have time or whatever, make time. You know, you can stay up late and you can wake up early. If you really love something, Thing and you want to dedicate yourself to it, then you're gonna make it work. Don't make excuses, be consistent, get better, be better, not only for yourself, but for everyone around you. This has been my TED Talk. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it inspired you to do something cool with yourself. If it isn't tattooing, then whatever it may be. Be the best that you can be, improve, progress, do your thing. I love you all, have a good day, goodbye.